So any other questions right now? I have a question. Yes. Excuse me. All right. Um, I'm just trying to <clears throat> ground this idea of, um, you know, clearing our own internal um, matrix uh, in relationship to assisting the Earth and also simultaneously working physically with the Earth. Um, so I'm just trying to ground this in, in an example. For instance, in this area, we're up against something called hydrofracking, which is uh, highly uh, toxic pollutants being poured into the earth. And we're, it's very difficult to combat this on a political level based on um, the massive amounts of money that these companies and lobbyists have. And so based on what you're saying, I'm kind of thinking, well, it seems as if there might be other ways energetically to approach working politically on the earth, i.e., what if groups of us got together and rather than lobby politicians or go door to door trying to get people to vote, what if we held a, a collective space of um, the uh, pristine, clean, un unfracked uh, Marcellus Shale or something like that? I don't know if you're following me. Now you're getting it. <laughs> That's what we would say. Because you're trying to work in an old system. All right, when you're trying to change the voting and all of that. Now, when, you, when you're creating in your local area something that's, that's toxic like that or that's being introduced, it's because the mindset of the local collective is, is allowing that in. If the local collective wasn't interested in creating and generating that, it wouldn't be manifesting. So as you start to work as a collective, you can, you can do a number of things. You can get together as a group. You can meditate. You can tone and sound. That's a favorite. Um, you can set the intent of what it is you want to generate. Remember, you don't have to go out and physically do, do something. What, what you do energetically is project your intent and then be there to receive. There is always action that is required because you're in physical reality, but it's not you having to go out and generate it from the get-go. The universe will show you what you need to do, what action you need to take, and it will be easy and effortless in your process. So... When enough of you get together and say, we want something different, you'll start to see it falling apart. The current structure that you're working with right now, if you want to think of it as geometric patterns, it's the hierarchical pyramid. Right? That's the structure of power right now. As you're shifting and going to a higher level of awareness, it goes from this hierarchical pyramid to overlapping circles, All right, where you've got pockets and collectives which overlap so that the power is dispersed. The few at the top, those with the money, are not controlling. It's when enough of you at the bottom level who've been supporting those at the top say, all right, I'm, I'm tired of holding you up, I'm taking my power back. I'm a creative being, I'm gonna create a different version of reality. Now, this is also hard for you all to kind of wrap your minds around, so bear with us and uh, breathe deeply as we go here. But there are the multiple versions of the planet which are coexisting one on top of another right now. And they're starting to pull apart as you're getting closer and closer towards 2012. Now, those who are creating some of those more dramatic, dense, vibratory experiences will be on that lower timeline. You can observe what's going on, but in your local reality and if in your personal reality, you may be creating something that is very, very different. So if you've got a big economic decline, you can be prospering. Because your vibration is of abundance that you're pulsing out and that's the result you're getting back. So what that looks like is still these two versions that are overlapping, all right, they haven't pulled apart just yet. You can see what's going on in the lower range, but your version is of a higher vibrational nature. So it looks different. Your experience is different. And eventually they're going to pull apart so that you're not going to see some of that nastiness that's still going on. So if they decide to move forward with those projects, you're not going to see it. In your version that you're vibrating and aligning yourself with, you're creating something that is more in alignment with the planet itself. And your, your reality will start to reflect that. So a recommendation for you would be to work with the collective. Start with as many as you can. It doesn't take a majority to make change. It takes a very small minority to pulse it out and create a new template. 144,000 is the vibrational number to create a new template for
for the planet. Now you can create a smaller template locally with a smaller number of you. All right, it's um, you can also work with the vortices and, and the ley lines, and so let's talk about that for just a moment. As we said, you've got these ley lines, these energetic centers. Now, some of you have experienced them as they may run through your home or they may run through your own property, and you'll you'll feel it when they're negative, or you may feel it when they're positive, and it has to be cleared on a regular basis. The ley lines, you can think about the energy just being absorbed from the entire area and filtering in. So if you've got a lot of toxic energy, a lot of lower vibrational energy, then you're going to experience the negative effect. You're going to feel it as negative. You can clear it. Now, there are points that are vortices on these ley lines where energy comes together. All right. Vortices, if you want to think of it like pillars in a building, girders that run all the way through a high rise, that keep all the floors stacked and evenly aligned. This is what vortices do dimensionally. They keep dimensions aligned. They are portals that you can step into, some of them, that, that you can go in and dimensionally. They're also absorbing all of this energy from the ley lines. So the vortice is what you're going to clear out. All right. So if there are a group of you who want to work, the thing we would recommend is to work with a vortex so that you are then sending that information out down those ley lines to all those who are not in the immediate presence so they're picking it up vibrationally through the planet and this is how you can work rather than creating a um, grid or a template around the planet you can work in your local area by working with the vortex and sending that out vibrationally so if you've got three or four of you, and that's all you've got to start with, you can start pulsing it out there and asking for all those who are interested to be drawn back to you. Be really surprised when you start working energetically how fast things work. Because you're all conditioned to think, all right, I've got to go pass out flyers and say, who wants to do this? When you simply call it in and you tell the universe, I'd like to be of service, I'd like to hold this frequency for the planet, and I'd like to be connected to those who are interested in joining me and being of service. Those people start showing up. Be a friend of a friend who hears what you're doing. Or you can be standing in the post office and other people will be having a conversation about, you know, that very thing that you want to alter. And you say, you know what, I've got a solution for you. And they're interested. It can come in many, many different forms as long as you are open to receive it. And it's much faster and easier than standing on that sidewalk and handing out the flyers and doing it in the old way, in the old physical way. So you're suggesting then that we work on the vortexes as opposed to, uh, for instance, in the instance of hydrofracking, holding the, the shale as protected or a hole? Or you can, yes. But what we're saying is working with the vortice on the land is going to hold that, it's going to pulse that frequency out and it's going to radiate out to get, um, to shift the awareness and the consciousness locally. All right. And it amplifies it. So when you're just holding the vibration, the more of you that are holding that vibration, it's exponential in what you're holding. So if there aren't a lot of you, that's why we recommend working with the vortex, because it will amplify your energy even more. All right? But you can hold that consciousness uh, and set that intent that that's what you want to do and work with the vortex at the same time. Great. Thank you so much. All right. I have a question, um, what, just furthering your last answer. Um, is it important to find the vortices and go to them, or do you just can you just do it wherever you are? And... Well, there are a number of things you can do. You uh, can be physically in the presence. There are all kinds of smaller vortices as well, and again, you can work holographically. So there, there are a number of options. Some of you like you may find that in the physical presence of a vortex, you're going to feel it more. And because you feel it more, you're going to believe it's real. Your perception of it will be different than you simply being by yourself and see yourself connecting. Is there really a difference? No. You find the frequency and you work holographically. You've got your own vortex within you. You can fire that up and work with that. But most of you will think, Oh, that's my imagination. That's not really weird. There's doubt that gets fed into that. So it, it may not be as potent because you've got doubt running. 
Do you have to go? No. You can do anything remotely. Time and space, distance, it's all an illusion. It's also the next step here as you go. You're going to learn to bilocate. Shift your focus and be in multiple places at once. You see that space is simply an illusion. And you can project yourself anywhere you want to be. Bend space. There's one for you. I have another question about um, the resources that you spoke of that are wanted. Could you talk about that? What resources are wanted and from what perspective they are used? Gold is one of them that's been utilized. Uh, the elements and the in its um, ability to one, to be malleable and two, to conduct energy and labor. You as labor, as, as energy centers, yourselves. So those are, those are the levels. And there, there are other natural minerals. Copper is another one, uh, another uh, one that was utilized for the conduction of energy. Your crystals on this planet and the use of crystalline energy. That was another one. Some of the beings that we're speaking of, and they're not the only ones, the Anunnaki, they were present on Mars at the time of Atlantis, and many of the Atlanteans had interactions with them. And they were observing what was going on on Earth, and they saw a grand opportunity as the last grand civilization of the planet was falling. So, you know, they kind of nudged the, many of the Atlanteans into doing some things that they knew was going, you know, that they knew... Uh, would lead to the downfall of their civilization so they could step in. Because they had already depleted a lot of the resources of Mars. And they are originally from the Sirius star system. And they have a number of worlds that they control and manipulate. And they have other species that are, well, for lack of a better word, slave races. And who do their bidding. And some of them have been doing it for so long that they don't remember that they're free to make another choice. Some of the other beings that are working with them, and, and the Anunnaki, by the way, are humanoid. All right? Some of the reptilians that you see, that some of you may see on this planet. Those are many times beings from the Pleiades. And they have forgotten that they have choice. Some of the insectoids, some of the greys are working with these beings. Some as slave races, others as partners in crime, if you will. All right, that they see a benefit, that they can gain more power and control together, alliances, if you will. Each is benefiting. And this is a universal game that's been going on for quite some time. And as we said, you all sent your representatives to Earth. Some of you have been the Anunnaki. All right, you've been in those dark roles. And, and we don't want you to fear them. We don't want you to lump them all together because there are some lovely Anunnaki. All right? And then there are some who are just up to some, some rather dastardly deeds. All right, again, you've got light and dark. Uh, you've got both extremes. But we don't want you to fear them in any, in any way. Remember, you are a sovereign being and you are a creator being and you're going to create and generate your own version of reality based on the frequencies that you're holding in your field. You're quite powerful. They don't have more power than you. That's what they're terrified that you're going to figure out. All right? That you have just as much power, if not more, in many ways because you are able to open up your entire energetic body. They're not. And they're afraid that you're going to find out. And that's why there is so much control and manipulation. They've got to keep the lid on it. All right. That's kind of a quick answer to your question. I have a question about the Anunnaki. I've been reading uh, some work by a man um, who says that uh, the Anunnaki came here to harvest gold for their planet. Yes and that they actually created human beings through genetics 
and through apes and uh, cloning. And uh, that's how humanity was began here, the human race. That part's not quite true. Okay. Uh, we would have a different version of history. All right, they did do genetic manipulation, but they were not the progenitors of, of humanoids. Again, there are five seed races, and they were not the geneticists who constructed humanoids. They did alter the structure, and they did deconstruct you a bit. But no, no. As we said, they were on Mars at the time of your Atlanteans, and you are, you are a hybridization of many of those Atlanteans and those Lemurians uh, who the Lemurians were descendants from Lyra and with the end of that civilization many went back and many went on to Atlantis to integrate with that culture and they were the Lemurians had a higher awareness and they hadn't gone through the process of dissension in the same way that the Atlanteans did so they had a different um, they had a different DNA structure and then as they descended into the Atlanteans again um, it altered the genetics and the Anunnaki when they stepped in did a bit more manipulation and is that why there is some uh, and we're only using 3% of our genes, our genes in part the other part is because you went into the, the dissension process you lowered your overall vibration, and when you do that, you turn off the coatings and the DNA. So I've had a feeling that when we begin to rise, then some of those codes will start coming online, so to speak. Yes, so off. exactly. The frequencies, because you're changing the energetic template, you change the DNA. They're dormant. They're there. Mm. Now, you've got two, well, you've got three that you'll build in the physical. The rest will all be in the higher realms, because there's no point. You're, you're going so quickly, you're moving through the ascension process, you'll be in another vibrational state, and you're going to have a light body. You're going to have a different version of your body that can run the higher energy. So you're in the process of transforming your physical structure. So the other 12 strands, you will rebuild in the energetic. They won't be in the physical. There seems to be a lot of information out there that, that kind of contradicts you know, that, that comes from, there's a man named Tom Kenyon who channels the Hathors, and he, they talk about jumping timelines being a good thing. Um, if you're in and part of the timeline, yes. Oh, okay. So if we were to say to you that you wanted to go observe the Andromedians, and you were not incarnated in that system, and you were projecting yourself there and then starting to work with their species, with their cultures, you could alter the timeline. So there are restrictions. Um, yes, there are restrictions. For you, as an individual, you're constantly moving back and forth between timelines right now. And because you're part of the game, you're not interrupting it, you're not changing it, you're not destroying it in any way. It's when you are not part of the game and you start playing in it. It would be like rolling a marble into... Uh, a machine that holds all kinds of moving parts. All right? The marble's foreign. So, from that level, you time jumping as part of your reality within your reality, great. If you're not somebody who is part of the game and you start jumping and moving into different parts of the galaxy, it can be very disruptive. But you are going to hear all different versions of the truth because the truth is not absolute. And You've got to take the bits and pieces that resonate with you. There are infinite versions of the truth. And there are 12 levels of consciousness that can be held within this universal structure. Actually 13 if you go up to source, but we're talking about the dimensions here. So, And each one is colored by its own experiences of the game. And then you've got all the beings who are processing and accessing what their perspectives are. And then your own. All right, so there are infinite versions. Then which timeline are you pulling from? When we give you a, a version of Earth history, which timeline are we pulling it from? Which dimensional level are we giving you information at? Sometimes you can't handle the full truth. It would be too traumatic to you. Or you just simply wouldn't understand. It would be too confusing and then you get caught in your mind and that's not serving you. 
So we give you a version that you can handle today. The version we may give you tomorrow may be slightly different because you're in a different space vibrationally. You may have put yourself on another timeline as well. Everybody take a deep breath. So does that help? Yes, thank you. And your understanding and what you think might resonate with you, it might resonate with you today and then tomorrow you'll say, you know what, that doesn't feel like the truth that is in alignment with me today and that's all right. Because as you change and grow, your version of the truth is going to change and grow. Some of you will get caught into this fear that may come from other lifetimes of not holding on to your truth or holding bitterly on to what you thought was the truth. All right, so in other words, uh, you may have been someone who, who was in resistance to change in another lifetime and you haven't been able to integrate that. Or you were verbalizing your version of the truth and you're persecuted for it. But know that the truth is ever changing, ever evolving, ever shifting. And this is in part because of the holographic nature of the universe. So if you can think of it this way, all of your experiences from this life, from other lifetimes, from your ancestral line, all that is showing up in your energetic field. Now, when your ancestor, whose stuff is showing up in your field, is having the experience, all right, it's running in your field. All right, that little film clip of his experience is running in your field. Now, it's not really past because there isn't time. It's all concurrent. So as he has an epiphany and he learns to integrate an issue, and it may be the very issue that you are working on right now and you're having difficulty, you can receive from him as he learns to integrate the information on how it's done, how he goes through that process of integration. Or vice versa. You may tell your ancestor how it's done. And because he now knows how to integrate abandonment, that can put him on another timeline. Well, you put him on another timeline and that's going to affect you. So now which version of the truth is your truth? Do you see how it works? Because you're holographic. Information is sent out to every molecule in the universe. And it's constantly evolving and changing. Now, from where you're at, it's hard because you think everything is a constant. That's what's so special about the third dimension and why you all get so excited about coming because it's so unlike any other dimension. It's very unique. It's a great opportunity to have a skewed version of the universe or an incomplete one, let's say that. All right? And your understanding of time is going to continue to change. You're going to be forced to because it's accelerating as you're spiraling up, if you will, as you're moving through this cycle. You're feeling it getting shorter and shorter. Right now, it feels like it's about a 12-hour day in a 24-hour period. Next year, it's going to feel more like eight. And in order to get anything done, you're going to have to learn how to manipulate time, how to step out of time. And this you're going to do intuitively. You're going to know what you need to do. You're going to work energetically to put yourself in the flow so that you can, you can step out of that third dimensional experience of time. Because otherwise, it's just going to feel too frenetic. It will be a natural progression for you all. Some of you are already <laughs> experiencing it, stepping out of time, slowing down time, expanding time. One of the visualizations we like to give to you that can assist you is to see two clocks. One is the local time where you are. The other is your own personal clock. If you need more time, you can set it back. If you're not enjoying where you're at and you want to accelerate it, move it forward. Just make sure that when you're done, you resync the clocks because otherwise you're going to feel a bit out of sorts. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to see yourself projected at the time that you want to have an experience. So if you need to be somewhere at 4.15, you're 
you are seeing and projecting yourself arriving at 4.15. Doesn't matter that that's 10 minutes away and normally that's a 40 minute drive. Doesn't matter. Time's an illusion. You can expand it. You can contract it. Doesn't matter. Because really all you ever do is project yourself. You're constantly projecting yourself into different points on timelines. Time is simply a marker to find an event. That's it. That's all it is. All right. We've gone off on a big tangent. <laughs> so what else? Any other questions here? Yes. Um, you spoke of um, not not utopia because I I have a sense of like we're coming to more of what I feel like a garden or a, like a Moria quality and. I wonder if you could speak about where we're going so I could impart that. Where do you want to go? That's what we'd say. I want to go to a place where we are co-creating and not in as much suffering, but on this earth in the dualistic, yes. less dark. Let me, let me start to ask, can, can we have just a little less suffering, <laughs> less darkness, you know? We have come to an Well, think of it this way, you know, um, suffering is perspective. That's all it is. Pain is perspective. Okay. And it's being created at, at the individual level. And when enough of you decide that you that's what you want to experience, that's when it gets projected at the collective level. Enough of you, you know, when you move into the fourth dimensional range, are you really wanting to create that? No, because you've, you've gone beyond a barrier. Mm -hmm. All right. You've shifted your awareness that you are a creator being. The other part to the multidimensional perspective is that as you project something, and you understand that you're part of the collective, you can feel and sense what the rest of the collective experiences as a result of your creation. So when you really feel that, you're not creating some of the nastiness that you are down in the density. Because now you all aren't feeling that if you're creating chaos, you may not feel the results of that chaos because you're dense. Until you shift yourself above the barrier and then you get to feel. This is what uh, happens in life review. All right, you get to experience all that you created because you remove that veil and there it is. This is where the notion of purgatory comes from. Where you all think of purgatory. Now, again, you can feel it and, it and we would say it lasts as you perceive it. We'll give you a number because you're human and you want the time three seconds. All right. In that moment, you have an expanded sense of awareness of all that you have created and what it was like for the collective. Because where you've been standing, you only get one perspective. But as a collective, you get to see all of it. You get to see all angles of it. And that's really interesting. But you don't stay in that state of pain. You see, oh, look what we co-created. Interesting results. There's no judgment there. And because there's no judgment, you don't stay in pain. All right. So that's part of the life review. But as you, as you move into these higher realms you, and you become part of the collective, you can feel it instantaneously. You know what you're creating and co-creating together. And you're not going to create exactly the same thing, each and every one of you. Uh, because it, it's just not how we create. We are source in that we have infinite ways of creating. We're not limited. And so we're constantly seeking out new ways of experiencing. So we don't all create the same way. We're seeking new ways because somebody else is doing that. And we may find a variation on that theme, but it's unique unto them. And we can access their record and we can see how they did it, what it felt like. So you're going to continue to create, you're going to get in the driver's seat. Some things will stay somewhat similar. It depends on what vibrational range you're in. Because if you're in the lower octaves of the fourth dimension, you're going to create something that is somewhat similar to earth in its structure because that's going to make you feel comfortable. It's not going to be a huge change. So what does that look like? You may still have a job, but the difference of the job is that you love what you're doing and you're not doing it for a paycheck and money simply flows. It's an exchange of energy. You don't hold on to that notion of, of needing money anymore. It's just energy and you allow your energy to flow. Eventually you're going to stop using money. 
it's just the representation that you're using at the physical level for energy. It is nothing more than that. And for those of you who are having financial difficulties, when you get that, you're going to stop having them. When you simply look and see where is your energy flowing? How is it flowing? Where is it not flowing? When you discover how it's not flowing, that's the source of why your money is not flowing. Because it's simply a reflection. But you will have things that will be similar and some things will be a bit different. And again, this goes to your dimensional level. Some of you are going to skip by the fourth and on into the fifth. Doesn't mean you're any better. Doesn't mean you're any more advanced. And, and you know, it, don't be in a rush to get there. All right, there's something to be said for each level of experience. Some of you have been conditioned to be overachievers and want to go straight to the top. There's a lot of interesting things in between not to be missed. So once you get to the fifth dimensional level, manifestation is, is a bit different. The fourth, it's still it's a transitory zone. You're still working out some of the kinks. Uh, when you get up into the fifth dimensional level, it is closer to what you would perceive as your quote-unquote utopia. Still, there are disagreements. Even in the ninth dimension, we still have disagreements. We don't blow each other up, right? Because our extremes of duality are not as broad. Down here, you've got a huge range, all right? At the top, as we always like to say, it's the difference between gray and medium light gray, not black and white. And we're still finding new and creative ways that are unique for each of us. So and we hope that helps. It's somewhat difficult for us to really tell you what it's like because you're still running the old operating system. So we do the best we can. Anything else? I have another question. Yes. <laughs> um, there's this uh, group of people called the Kogi that live in South America. And it's my understanding that they are considering themselves to be stewards of the earth. And they're trying to spread that, um, uh, the importance that we all take that stewardship very seriously. And they are, um, they communicate with a, I, I don't really know how to describe it, it's called the, they call it the Aluna. It's a different dimension where I think there are elemental beings. Yes. And what um, I've been told that they have observed is that the Aluna is, um, they're fading, they're disappearing because not enough of us are paying attention to that element. And they're, they've feel it's very urgent now, so can you speak about that? Well, as we said, we'll be really blunt about this. There's not one on this planet who has fully integrated that stewardship. And that goes to full connection with the planet, and that is just not happening in density. You, it's, it, in some ways, it's simply not possible until you shift your overall awareness. Uh, and at that point, you're out of the third dimensional realm. So will stand by our original statement. There's not one on this planet who is 100% a steward. Not yet. Not yet. Soon. Now, yes, there are many elementals, many uh, other beings that they're feeding off of love, and the love is missing from the planet right now. So they are fading in a sense because they're not being energized. They're not able to receive that nourishment so that they can pulse and thrive. Uh, and that will start to shift as well. Remember, they are also co-creating with you. It's not just happening to them. They're not just victims. It is a co-creative process. And those beings who are holding that resonance, that consciousness that is holding that resonance, knows very well the service that they are holding and the potential for that outcome. And many of them will remove their essence in order to help get your attention. To say, you're not nourishing yourselves. They're not being nourished. Because you're not nourishing yourselves. Because you're not pulsing out that love vibration. And it, it's helping to bring awareness to multi-dimensional beings. Uh, it's helping to bring awareness to how you are a collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. That you're a living organism, the planet, and you, together. You're one. So they are providing another perspective to show this, to illustrate this. And it will resonate with many of you very, very deeply. I say, oh yes, I remember this, when you hear the story. And that's the whole point. 
Does that help? Yes, thank you very much. All right. So we will go ahead and wrap it up for, for, for this portion. And when we come back, we're going to talk a bit more about some of the other beings that are in the other realms who are ready to assist you and to guide you. All right? So we'll see you shortly.